Hello and welcome to another GCSE Economics video with me, Mr Goff, for MrGoff.com. This video will focus on how the government's choices in relation to taxes and spending affect the markets. Let's start by having a look at how changes to direct taxes might affect certain markets. As income tax goes up, supply in the labour market might be reduced. This is because workers will keep a lower proportion of their wages. This will mean that working will be less appealing to more workers, and some workers will choose not to work as much. On the other hand, if income tax goes down and workers keep more of their wages, then more people will be encouraged to supply their labour. As well as affecting the labour market, changes to income tax will also affect demand for goods and services. This is because as income tax goes up, people have less money to spend on goods and services. This means demand for goods and services goes down. On the other hand, if income tax goes down, then there will be greater demand for goods and services because more people will have more money. If corporations tax goes up, then firms may be discouraged from investing. This will stop new jobs from being created. If it goes down, they may be more likely to invest and create new jobs in the country. Changes to indirect taxes, that is taxes on spending, also have a big effect on the markets. As VAT increases, goods and services become more expensive and so demand for these goods goes down. If VAT is decreased, then things will be cheaper and demand for goods and services will rise. When the government increases excise duties, the aim is to reduce the consumption of goods and services that have negative externalities. The hope is that by raising the prices of these goods through added excise duties, demand will go down. Next up, let's take a look at how the government's spending choices will affect markets. The money the government spends provides incomes to the firms that provide the goods and services that they purchase. Let's look at an example such as the government's investment in HS2. The money the government spends becomes incomes for the firms that construct the railway and their workers. These firms then require more inputs and both they and their workers have more money to spend themselves, increasing demand elsewhere. This is known as the multiplier effect. Let's look at two examples from this scenario. So, a firm wins money from the government to construct the railway, and they spend some money with another firm that produces steel. This firm now has more money themselves, and they decide to upgrade their accounting system, providing money for yet another firm. And so you can see that the initial money provided by the government will be spent again and again, providing a multiplier effect for its benefit on the economy. We can also see that the construction of the railway creates jobs for a number of workers. This means higher average incomes in the local communities where the line is being built. These people then have more money to spend in businesses in the community, places like restaurants. These firms then need more employees themselves, and then there's again higher average incomes. These people will then have more money to spend in other businesses in the local area, such as gyms, and this effect continues on, multiplying the benefits of the government spending. When the government chooses to reduce the amount it spends, it can throw our multiplier effect into reverse. In this case, it reduces the incomes of the firms that provide the goods and services to the government. These firms now need less workers to cope with the lower output required. As people become unemployed, they have less money to spend, decreasing demand elsewhere and creating this vicious circle. Another way the government can spend money is by providing subsidies. These are sums of money the government gives to either producers or consumers to try and encourage the consumption of goods with positive externalities. For instance, by providing subsidies to renewable energy firms, the government hopes it will help it meet its CO2 reduction targets and improve the environment. That brings us to the end of this video where we've analysed the effects of taxes and spending on markets. Join me in the next video when we're going to evaluate the costs and benefits of fiscal policy and see where this might not always go quite as planned. Try the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise economics and until next time, it's bye for now.